Yeah. Could you explain how the laser weeder's vision system is mm -hmm. designed to differentiate between the crops and the weeds? Um, mm -hmm. So like what components do you use mm -hmm. in the system? Um, yeah. Validation processes for accuracy? Yep, we have um, a bunch of different cameras on the system that are used in two capacities. The first one is prediction of weed location. And then the second one is for target lock identification on the lasers themselves. And both of those are guided by a neural net, an AI system that is looking through the cameras to make judgments about what it's seen and then make predictions. And when I say predictions, what I mean is the neural net doing identification and classification from what's called a convolutional neural net, which is what all of these vision systems use in one type or another. Ours has been purpose-built, specifically designed for laser weeding. Um, it works quite well. Our research uh, scientists and deep learning specialists, you know, are probably the best in the industry and have created an amazing system. So the AI sees and identifies targets, and then it controls the location of the laser through a series of servos and optics. And then we turn the laser on and burn out the weeds. We kill them at the Mary stem, so it, it stops the growth of the plant through destruction of the undifferentiated Mary stematic cells in the plant itself. And uh, we do that across 30 lasers, parallel simultaneously on the machine as it runs through the field. And so that's the basics of how it works. So about how big is that machine? 20 feet. 20, 20 feet? feet. Yeah, okay. so it's a typical th three rows of an 80-inch 80, 80 configuration or 640s. You know, those are two common common uh, scenarios. Okay. So tell me about the deep learning models and um, how they detect and classify those objects with the lasers and how yeah. you train them. And uh, yeah, let's yeah. start with that. We have a lot of GPUs in our data center. Um, and so what we do is we capture images from all of the laser readers that are running. And those images are, are classified in terms of the plant, the, uh, the crop type that was in the field. And then we prioritize our training um, on the images based on what the neural net thinks is going to learn the most from. And we do that by looking at the image, figuring out which things are the top priority, because it's, Im it's images different than anything we've seen before, we prioritize the training of those. And that causes our neural nets to accelerate in their identification behavior really fast. And so what that means is we can roll into a field and build a brand new vision model for a new crop that we've never seen before in 24 to 48 hours. Um, so it starts with the pictures and it ends with an AI. Okay. Um, so how does it handle, how does the machine itself handle the real-time data processing? It's yeah. on the machine itself. We have uh, 24 NVIDIA GPUs that are split evenly across all of the rows. And so as images come in, in real time, those GPUs are running the, the AIs on them, the neural net, and making predictions based on the images as it comes in. So that's the entirety of the real-time component. It's a live real-time detection of what it's seen in real time. And then in the background, we're uploading those images to our data center and then using those images for training for future neural nets. And that's how the system continues to get better and better because we're always pulling in new images. And that continual process is has an accelerating effect, you know, because once you get far enough along, you're really focusing on the images that are more rare every time, which means you're 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 continually optimizing for the cases that are the hardest. Um, and we're, you know, well past the point now where our neural nets are best in the world. Um, because of the amount of data that we have, the, because of the amount of images, because of the amount of object labels, um, and just the raw amount of time that we've been we've been doing this. Right. You know, I'm I'm thinking sometimes when you're growing a crop, you know, you have like ugly ugly vegetables and ugly mm -hmm. fruit, and sure. I guess it would take time to build up that's the right. database. Yeah. Yeah, to... that's right. Yeah, and it doesn't need to see everything, so it doesn't need to see every example. It's building a one way to think about it is it's learning the essence of what it means to be a crop 
And it's doing it in a way that is not just identification of a leaf pattern or a color or something like that. It's a combination of all the environmental context around it. Um, you know, it uses everything from shadows to things like leaf shape and color and texture, uh, stem size, right? Leaf, leaf distance from the stem, um, fan out pattern. It uses all kinds of stuff. Um, but the brilliant thing about these neural nets is the way that they operate and optimize is they pick out for every case the thing that is most differentiable between these different cases. That's kind of the magic of the neural net, right? Is that it focuses on the thing that is easiest to use to differentiate. So that's why they work so well. It's also why people get into trouble when they don't really know what they're doing and they build something that they think is classifying correctly, but really it's using hints that aren't actually accurate. Um, so there's many of examples of this kind of data information leakage where people thought they were training a neural net to do some specific task, and really it was using hints and context around it, and it came to the wrong conclusion about things. So you have to be re really careful with this, and you have to know what you're doing with these AI systems. Otherwise, you can get into trouble where you think you've produced something for a certain result, and you've just kind of fooled yourself. It happens all the time. Sure, they're they're very advanced. Um... Yeah systems and very complex. Yeah. So let's talk about that, the integration of those complex systems and deep sure. learning with the mechanical components of the weeding machine. How sure. do they all work together in practice? Yeah, I mean, our one of the nice things about the laser is our mechanical components are really just the optics and optics control system. So it's all the servos. And those servos, I mean, we have to calibrate them very carefully. The computer needs to know and understand the geometry of in a 3D space of how the laser is going to bounce and how the mirrors need to be adjusted to have different effects on the ground. And all of that stuff is, is, is a, it's a combination of calibrated and trained in our AI systems. So when they leave the factory, the AI knows how to put that laser beam on the ground at any specific spot that it wants to. And it's all done through very simple and very fast motor movements that are controlling the position of these optics. And that's it. That's one of the beautiful things about laser weeders. There's very little moving parts. Moving parts in agriculture, that's where everything breaks. You know, everything that's broken on your farm machinery is something that moves. So we have very little of that. Um, and it means not only, you know, can we can we be sure that it's going to run for a long time and continue to run well, um, but we also don't have the same level of wear or miscalibration that happens over time if you were using like an arm or a blade or something like that, right? Because, um, you know, again, nothing's touching the ground physically. And it also means that if we need to adjust to different prop spacings or row sizes, we can do the whole thing opti optically. So you never have to move anything around. You don't have to adjust the positions of your blades, for example. You don't have to move those themselves and they don't move. However, the machine itself is moving and on bumpy ground. Moving. So how yeah. do you ensure that the lasers stay put? And, and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's a, we have what we call a, a, it's a closed loop system, which means that the neural net is always looking at what it thinks it's pointing at and continually reevaluating what it's doing. So it's kind of like if you were going to, if you were playing like laser tag or something like that, um, anything with a targeting system, you would keep your eyes open and continually evaluate where you're pointing the business end of whatever device. It's the same thing, right? So it's not a shoot, it's not a target and forget kind of system, which is one of the, I think maybe more interesting aspects of how we had to make this work where the AI is continually reevaluating what it's looking at and adjusting over time. So those bumps that you're talking about, and variation in height and all of that stuff is all adjusted for and responded to optically by our AI. And I think we may be the only ones doing that because I haven't seen another system like this. And it's the it's the reason we're able to be on target because we're it's always looking at what it's pointing at and continually readjusting and evaluating. And that's the that's a very important aspect of the system that I think people don't always touch on or realize until you actually get out into the farm and you see. How, you know how bouncy how bouncy and un and unconsistent everything is you know along, along the way you have to be able to adjust to that right that's a good point 
So this just popped into my head as we're talking about the laser. Obviously, it's a very concentrated. Do you have to worry about um, fire? Do you have to worry about, you know, starting a fire where there shouldn't be a fire? Yeah, I mean, there are there's certainly places that have most of these fields are, you know, are well manicured and don't have a lot of dry brush around. But there are areas where you need to be careful. Um, that's why there's a driver tractor driver in the, you know, driving the lazy weeder. That's part of the responsibility is to make sure you're not getting it too near anything that is uh, combustible. And, you know, if you do, you got to make sure you put the fire out. So we have stuff where there's, you know, leftover cover in the field that's been left to dry out. Not usually an issue, but occasionally some, sometimes things come up and you most, you know, 99% of the time you stop it out with your boot and keep going. Can you tell us maybe what a cost benefit analysis would look like for a farmer? We like to make sure that the farmer ROI, the farmer payback period for the cost of laser weeder is between one and three years. Um, that means you should be saving enough to pay for a laser weeder to pay for itself within a, a three-year timeline. Um, and then we like to show yield increases on top of that. It's uh, We've had really good success with that. We've seen yield increases of up to 50%. Um, and it's it, and I it, what's interesting about that is a lot of times People don't realize how much when they spray, it's actually hurting their crops, their crop production, time to market, all that stuff. And it's not until you use a tool like laser weeder and you are able to remove that application of chemical that you actually see how much benefit something like a laser, laser weeder provides in, in yield. And, you know, the inverse of that is how much damage you were doing by spraying all that time. So my next question, my last question is actually about looking ahead and future mm -hmm. developments. Sure. But as a consumer myself, I'm thinking I really need a, like a little handheld laser weeder in my sure. yard. I think that sure. would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if if that's something that you're looking toward, but um, what future developments in machine vision and deep learning mm -hmm. do you foresee that could increase the efficiency first of this laser weeding technology mm -hmm. as it's used industrially. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then maybe after that, we could talk about, you know, applications for the average Joe. I mean, we will have new products coming out later this year that are also uh, computer vision AI systems that are completely different from laser weeder. And so I think what we've learned is that there are many other opportunities in agriculture to build automation with these new capabilities that we have enabled by advancements in AI. And we're really focused on the areas where we can add the most value. So we will have some new stuff coming out in a little bit. That is AI systems and agriculture un completely different from laser weeder. Oh. Um, and we will of course, you know, continue to evolve and sell laser weeder product line, but we have a new product line coming out as well. Sometime between now and the end of the year, Sounds like so, we're going to have to have another chit chat sure. later on down the line. Yeah. And then, you know, on the consumer side, I mean, that's not really something we're looking towards. Um, I'm more of a B2B kind of person. That means, you know, my experience and, and comfort zone is really selling to businesses. Um, uh, if some, you know, if somebody wanted to produce a consumer version, we could maybe license some of the software or something, but that's a, that's a different business than what we focus on. Gotcha. You know, I don't think we talked about scalability yet. Um, what about scalability? Are there any strategy in, in place for different scales of farming operations or? Um, you know, we we have a one size fits all machine. Um, maybe at some point we would have different sizes. Um, that would be in the future. You know, what we're focused on right now is our everyday 20 foot laser weeder and making sure that everybody gets the best product that we can um, we give great support and all that stuff. So we're really focused on our, our main unit. Eventually maybe we'll have different sizes, but that would be a ways out. Is there anything else that you wanted to let our audience of multidisciplinary and mechanical engineers know mm -hmm. about, uh, about your technology and your company before I let you go? I mean, yeah, we have all kinds of videos on the internet. If you're interested, please take a look, visit our website, carbonrobotics.com. We have of course, YouTube, Instagram, uh, you know, all of the socials. Um, and if you're looking to get into laser weeding and you uh, you want to contact us, that would be great. Um, and if you're looking to get into agriculture and autonomy and AI coming together, uh, I encourage you to do it. There's a lot of great stuff happening. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and yeah, thank, thank our audience for joining us today. And until next time, stay curious.